What I'm going to talk about today is this, these three V's that we've been talking about a lot. We've, you know, this XLDB, it's very macho to talk about how big the databases are. Uh, I think this is actually the least interesting part of the whole thing. Uh, and I want to focus on the variety part and the velocity part. Okay? And velocity, we often focus on how fast the data is arriving. To me, that's just correlated to the volume. What I want to focus on is how fast the structure of the data is changing as opposed to how fast the data is arriving. That is more interesting part of velocity to me. And so the, the key point that I'm going to make at the end of this five minutes is that if we take this data, and this is actual web log data from eBay, right, which here is labeled as unstructured data. I hate this term unstructured. All data has structure. Right? Unstructured data is a term that relational database bigots use to describe data they don't understand because they can't put it in a square. Okay? All data has structure. The problem is that in traditional data warehouses, we try to add the structure at load time through our ETL processes. We extract the data from a variety of source systems. We hope they're record-oriented or relational or some you know, delimited flat file or something, and we can shove it in a square. And if you're using traditional data, that's OK. It will work. And, and we do the transformations, and we cleanse, and we homogenize, and then we load it, and we have predetermined the structure at load time. Right? So to me, the power of this big data paradigm isn't how big the data is that you can work with, but rather that I can defer adding structure to query time instead of load time. That's actually the real insight of this big data thing. Right? So, so the idea here with late binding is I'm going to bind the structure at query time. Right? And so rather than sort of try to force everything into a square, and again, th this is actually, I'm trying to use a real example here from eBay to, to make it not a theoretical discussion. Right? This is a real example. There are certain columns that I'm always going to want. I'm going to want the date timestamp. I'm going to want the URL. I'm going to want the, the browser version things. I know they're always there, and I'm going to use them all the time and so on. But there's other stuff that changes all the time, because what I capture in that unstructured clob changes all the time, because the web page is completely dynamically constructed, and I don't even know the number of things that will be on the web page, much less the variety of objects that will be captured over time. So what you see in the far right hand is essentially just a clob, a character large object. And I'm going to impose no structure at load time. In fact, I'm going to use what I'll call the, the no ETL strategy. No ETL, just E and L. Extract it and load it. Okay? And so now I'm going to have this clob here. And I need to go beyond traditional SQL in order to do something with it. Because if you don't put the structure at load time, you're just kicking the can down the street further. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to parse it at query time. So this name value list function, which we refer to as sort of beyond SQL, SQL++ is what eBay calls it. We will take this clob-like thing, and we're going to search for a tag, and then we're going to create an item list based on that tag. Again, I'm making a, a much simpler example than, than how it works in real life just to make it understandable. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this normalized list, and I'm going to pivot that item list into something that a relational database knows how to deal with. Right? And so when I run this query on you know, 4 trillion rows of data, how long should this take? 4 trillion rows of data. 32 seconds. 32 seconds is what it takes. Right? And there are no indexes on this table, no indexes. So the point here is I'm actually parsing the clob using Java code underneath that function. And I'm doing the T part of what we normally call ETL that's preload. I'm doing that at query time. Okay? So my ask is bring, change the line of ETL and BI tools. Okay? Thank you. <laughs>